forget about nodes, color wheels, and all the confusing menus you see in the DaVinci Resolve color menu. In this video, I'll show you how to make your footage look awesome using only the most essential and simple color correction sliders. Because as a beginner, you should be keeping your workflow simple and not learning overcomplicated features that you simply don't need for average day-to-day -day projects like YouTube videos. Okay, here I am inside DaVinci Resolve. This is my timeline and these are the clips you just watched. What I'm going to do next is head over from the edit tab to the color tab. And this is where all the big scary color wheels and scopes and endless color menus have probably turned you off in the past. But don't worry, as a beginner, you don't need the vast majority of it. Now, the first step we're going to take here is selecting whether we want our clips to be color graded individually or collectively. Since here on the timeline, while I do have one source clip, I've cut that up into multiple sections represented by these three thumbnails on the color page. If you do have a consistent track that plays throughout your video, like this talking to camera clip, what I'd suggest doing is linking them together through something called remote grades. And to do that, all you have to do is right click the thumbnail of one of the clips and head up to use remote grades. You'll see that this now popped up this red icon here. And what that means is whenever we make a change to one clip like this, you'll see that it applies to all cuts on the timeline. Then we, when we head back here, you'll see them again. Whereas before it was set as using a local grade, which means all of these clips are individual. So if you made a big change to one, it's not going to adjust the other clips that came from that same source clip. So for any bigger clips that you've cut up into lots of pieces on your timeline, I'd suggest using remote grades. Again, by right clicking and choosing remote grades here. Okay, now let's color correct. And while advanced colorists will use tools like these scopes down here and nodes on nodes on nodes, there's a whole color science to accurate color correction, which you don't need to worry about as a beginner. Instead, what I'd suggest focusing on is creating a look that looks somewhat like your scene, your person, your landscape, looks like in real life. And you can normally tell by eye, it's not this and it's not this, it's something like this. And the way we discover what this look is, is through doing color correction. Until the image you're looking at looks good without too much contrast, highlights that aren't too bright, shadows that aren't too dark. It just looks somewhat like it looks in real life, if not slightly better. And the place we're going to do this color correction is in this window here. But don't worry, we're not going to touch any of these wheels or funky dials or RGB color numbers. All you need to color correct as a beginner is this line here and this line here. Between all of these settings, you should be able to correct the vast majority of your shots and get them looking great. And for many, many years of color correction, I found the best approach is breaking it up into two steps. The first step is adjusting exposure. So brightness, contrast, highlights, and shadows. And then the second step is color, either warmth or cool. Is cool the word? It is now saturation, vibrance, hue, and so on. So let's follow step one, and that is exposure. And the first place to start here is with contrast. Sometimes clips come out with high contrast out of the camera like this one here, and other times they come out with low contrast and need to be fixed. So start your color correction by moving this slider left and right until you find a contrast level that looks natural to what your scene would look like in real life in terms of contrast. I like to go left and right a couple of times with all these settings because color correction really is a process of experimentation, trying all the sliders to the left to the right until you find the sweet spot on each. So I'm going to leave my contrast around here. And the next setting that is directly related to contrast is pivot, which essentially has to do with which parts of your image will get these contrast adjustments added. Will it be the highlights, the shadows or somewhere in between? So if you have a play with that, you'll see your image get less contrasty and more contrasty. I like to play with both of these settings simultaneously until I get the exact contrast level that looks good. And right now it's looking around there. Okay, the next exposure setting is down here in shadows and highlights. So again, with all of your shots, test these out, see if your shot needs the shadows to be boosted. Here I've done an extreme boost all the way up. That's way too far. And all the way to the left is way too underexposed. But I'm thinking somewhere maybe around five will be good. And next with highlights, usually you need to bring highlights down because light sources, the sun, 
anything that is getting hit really hard by any kind of light is susceptible to overexposure where the highlights can completely blow out. So if you bring your highlights down, this will minimize any overexposure in your brightest areas. If you take a look here around my face and the neon behind me, if I turn this right up, you'll notice that parts of both things turn to pure white. This is a classic case of overblown highlights. So I like to drag mine right down until all the detail is recovered, which is somewhere around there. Next it's time to move on to color and there are a few simple color settings here. Again you'll want to do this by eye when setting all of these and the first place I'd usually go would be color boost. If you've come from other editors or maybe even photo editors this is essentially the same thing as vibrance. The difference between vibrance and saturation is saturation will turn up the intensity of the colors across the board without discriminating. So if you have something that's really colorful like the neon behind me it's going to become way, way too colorful because you're turning up the saturation equally on all colors. Whereas vibrance, or as Da Vinci calls it, color boost, this will turn up only the colors that aren't very saturated and leave the ones that already are. So here I'm going to drag this slider to the right and my less colorful areas are becoming more colorful now without over intensifying the already colorful areas like the neon. Whereas again, if you just turn saturation up like this, suddenly I become an Oompa Loompa in an igloo. So choose a level of color that you personally like. I like my videos being very colorful, obviously not overdone. I don't really want to be an Oompa Loompa, so I'll always dial it back just a little bit. However, this is also where color temperature comes in because generally skin tones show up more on the warm side. So by simply dragging the temperature slider slightly to the left, like so, my skin tones are now looking much more normal while the background is just as colorful as it was before, which gives me more flexibility to turn the color boost up a little bit more making all of my nice colors around my frame even more colorful without ruining my skin tones. Some other color sliders worth mentioning are tint. And with this one, I'd say unless you have a room that is really green or pink, you should probably stay away from this one because you don't need it. Sometimes, for example, my lights in the room are either green or my camera is casting a slight magenta tone onto my video, which is where I'll just adjust it left and right a little bit. So here I brought it down to minus 14 on the green side and that has made my skin tones look just a little bit more natural but in the vast majority of cases you won't need to use the tint function. The next is hue and this one is really silly I don't even know why they include it in DaVinci and what that does is it changes the colors universally across your entire image so if you want to look like a Martian then go ahead and turn that all the way up if you don't though then don't touch the hue. Finally there's luminance mix and I wouldn't bother with this one because it doesn't really do a whole lot compared to the other the sliders. Now for the exciting part. So this is what the color grade looks like. You saw me do it, but you've probably already forgotten what the before looks like. Well, I'm going to remind you of that. So up the top, you'll see this colorful red circle that is sparkling. If you click that, that will show you your before. So you can click it on and off to see your before and after. And this provides a good point of reference to see how you might want to adjust the grade further. The final setting here in this super beginner friendly color correction menu is mids and detail. And what this essentially means is sharpening. So if you drag that all the way up, it's going to sharpen the life out of your images. Clearly this now looks over sharpened. I brought it up to hundred, but you might want to consider dragging it up to between 10 and 20 if you have a talking head like like I do, because it will just help sharpen out the eyes and details around the face without overdoing it. Now you might be thinking, well, that's all well and good if you're making YouTube videos, but I shoot action or some other kind of video. Will this same approach work with my footage? I'm glad you asked. Here I've imported in a shot of the Apple store from Singapore that I got on my recent trip there. How cool is that, by the way? It's literally a floating orb in the middle of the harbor. Anyway, yes, this same process applies. So again, you'd start with your contrast and find a level that looks good and natural and gives your scene a chance to really pop out and not blend in too much with the background. Then adjust the highlights and shadows followed by the color boost to a natural level and the temperature to make it look the right level of warmth. And let's take a look before, after. 
pretty good. So yes, follow the exact same process. Exposure first, followed by colors. Now here's a massive time-saving tip that you'll want to make sure you do. So if you're like me and you shoot the same type of video over and over, like a YouTube video in a similar setting with similar lighting, you don't want to have to color grade your videos every single time from scratch. Especially if you grade it one way and you really like it and then struggle to replicate it in the future. Instead, what you want to do is save that color grade so you can apply it to your future videos with one click. And to do that, we'll need to create what's called a LUT. So let's say I really like this color grade here. It already knows all the settings I like here for my YouTube studio. So what I'm going to do to save this is right click the thumbnail, then go up to generate LUT. 33 point cube. Go ahead and save that somewhere obvious like your desktop since we will be moving it. Now up the top left of DaVinci, click LUTs, open up this sidebar here. And what we're going to do is right click this LUTs folder and choose reveal in finder. This essentially shows us where all these LUTs are being saved for DaVinci Resolve. And now all you need to do is drag your file, which is gonna be called 33 point cube over to this LUT folder here. You can absolutely rename it, so I'm going to do that, I'll just call it YouTube dot cube and it's done. So now back here in DaVinci Resolve, all you need to do is right click this window on the left hand side and click refresh. And right here down the bottom, here it is. And I've now imported another clip just as an example. So this is a separate recording to the original. And all I'm going to do now is click and drag that onto the thumbnail. And this has now applied my color grade to a brand new clip. So now every time I go back and make a new video with the same background, I don't need to color grade from scratch. Instead Instead, all I'll do is come to the color tab, find my LUT and drag it on. So that's how you color correct in DaVinci Resolve the easy way. I've been editing for 20 years and while I used to dig really deep into the color correction menus of Resolve and I felt like such a nerd, like I was a cinematic Hollywood colorist, the truth is as I became a content creator, I realized I just didn't need all of those really advanced tools and all I needed really was just the basics of exposure and color, which meant over time I was able to speed up my workflow exponentially and make way more content. So if you are a beginner, I'd really advise keeping your color correction work flow as simple as possible, especially in the early days. By the way, as a thanks for watching this video right to the end, I wanna give you a little gift. If you follow the link below, you can download my DaVinci Resolve editing shortcuts that will show you how to speed edit in DaVinci Resolve, which will save you so much more time on top of the time you've already saved spending all that time in color correction. These are keyboard shortcuts for editing on the edit page. So definitely download them and take advantage. And now that you know color correction, you'll probably want to learn what the best cuts are for editing a video in a stylish way. In this video here, I share my top 10 cuts that I recommend all editors use to get stylish looking videos every single time.